here we discuss the governing equations for incompressible and irrotational flows. So ir incompressible flows um, means that the, the flow satisfies the incompressibility condition so that the divergence of u is equal to zero. And irrotational flows are flows in which the curl of the velocity field is always equal to zero. And the curl of u being the vorticity, that means that there is no vorticity in the fluid. Now, another way of saying that a flow is irrotational and that the curl of the velocity is zero is to say that um, the flow velocity, the, the, the velocity field, uh, derives from a potential. So mathematically, the fact that the curl uh, is equal to zero is equivalent to saying that there exists a potential, we're going to call it phi, uh, such that the velocity field u derives from a potential. So we can write u as the gradient of a function. So this is a field. Again, it could depend on the position uh, and time. And that here is um, a velocity potential. Note that um, this idea that when the curl of a vector field is equal to zero, that means that this vector field derives from a potential you have seen before uh, in the context on, of conservative forces. So this is here a side note. So the way we've defined conservative forces in your uh, dynamics class <clears throat> is uh, a force field. A conservative force uh, is a force such that uh, the, the, the force doesn't produce any work on any close contour. So that, that means that the force does not uh, work. So if you have a close trajectory, you start from a point and you move back to the original point. Your force will not have produced any work. The way you write this is that the work on this co close contour, which is the close interval uh, of the work, so f dot dl, this has to be equal to zero. Now you've seen before that in that case, when the force is conservative, this here is equivalent to saying that the force derived from a force potential. So we can always write in that case that the force uh, can be equal to minus. For forces, <clears throat> we put a minus sign, not for velocities, and we don't put a minus sign here. It's equal to the gradient of a force potential. But now, if you use the Stokes theorem, you know that the uh, circulation, if you want, of the velocity field is going to be equal to the flux through a surface of uh, the curl of your force field. Sorry, dot NDS. And therefore, saying that this is equal to zero is actually equivalent to saying that the curl of F is equal to zero everywhere. Right. So here you have this equivalence between the fact that the curl of F is going to be equal to zero and the fact that you can derive your force uh, field from a potential. Right? So this is actually a mathematical relation. And it's the same one that we use here. If we have an irrotational flow, then we know that our velocity field derives from a potential. So if we have an irrotational flow, we will equally um, equivalently say that our velocity field is equal to the gradient of a potential. This is also just saying that the flow here is irrotational. All right, now there's another um, element associated with uh, irrotational flow. Uh, note that at this point, I want you to see that uh, assuming a flow is irrotational is really assuming something about the velocity field. You're assuming that at every single point in the flow, if you look at the velocity field, there is no rotation in the velocity field. You, you could have deformation, so your rate of strain tensor might not be equal to zero. Uh, there is translation, there could be translation, but there, there is no rotation. Anywhere you look, there is no rotation. But it's really a property of uh, the velocity field. It's not a physical property, as if you said the flow is in viscid, for instance. However, we will see that uh, for an irritational flow, there is a consequence in terms of um, yeah, that is related to inviscid uh, flows. Um, and so if you take the curl of um, the velocity field, 
sorry, I mean, if you take the curl of the vorticity field, for an irrotational flow, it is quite clear that the curl of a vorticity field um, is equal to zero because the vorticity is equal to zero. Now that this has consequences if we now look at an incompressible, at a flow which is both incompressible and irrotational. But uh, before I say that, I have to remind you of, uh, again, a result from um, tensor analysis, uh, from a differential calculus. And this is not something that you are supposed to remember, but uh, some of you might remember that. Uh, so if you take the curl of the vorticity, this is equal to the curl of the vorticity is the curl of u. And again, you have one of these composition of a, a differential operator with a differential operator. You can actually uh, show that this is equal to the gradient of the divergence field. Note that this is still a vector. You know, just is, this is a vector. This is a vector. This is a vector field, I should say, plus the divergence of the gradient of u. Note again, this here is a matrix. And if you take the divergence of a matrix, you have one bar, two bars is two, minus one, one. So this is also um, a vector field. So this here is a mathematical relationship. But of course, um, on the one hand, if you have an irrotational flow, you have that um, the um, curl of omega is equal to zero. So the curl of omega is equal to zero. You also have this uh, relationship here. So the curl of omega is equal to the gradient of the divergence of u plus the divergence of the gradient, the divergence of the, sorry, gradient of u, which is equal to the Laplacian of u, right? And if the flow is incompressible, then we know that the divergence of u is equal to zero. And therefore, if the flow is incompressible and irrotational, what you have is that the Laplacian of the velocity field is equal to zero. Now, of course, this term here is not unknown to you. Um, you know that it comes into the momentum equation of um, the Navier-Stokes equation. And so a consequence of uh, an incompressible and an irrotational flow is that uh, the viscous term in the momentum equation disappears. So if you write the momentum equation, you have that rho times the material derivative of the velocity field is equal to minus the grad of the pressure plus mu times the Laplacian of the velocity. And you see here that this term is equal to zero for uh, incompressible irrotational flows. And um, one way of calling uh, ir incompressible irrotational flows is to say that those flows are ideal. So this is also called an incompressible irrotational call, uh, flow is uh, the definition of an ideal flow, which is not the same as an ideal fluid. An ideal fluid is a fluid property. An ideal flow is a flow which is incompressible and irrotational. So here rho is equal to material derivative of u dt is equal to minus grad p. So the momentum equation for an ideal flow reduces to the Euler equation. And so note that for an incompressible irrotational flow, the flow is inviscid in that the viscous term uh, is equal to zero. It, in that case, it is different than to say that the flow is, uh, that the fluid is inviscid. The viscosity could be non-zero, but if the flow has this property of being irrotational on top of being incompressible, then there is no, there is no flow field for the viscosity to act upon. There is no component of the flow field for the viscosity to act upon because the Laplacian of u uh, is equal to zero. Uh, 